Hey everyone, in this video I share with you my most loved favorite watercolors and before we get into the video I just want to say this is a very relaxed chatty style video like I make. If you're only interested in the info I will write everything in the description box with links so you can just check those out. But in case you want to join me for some watercolor chattiness, grab a cup of coffee or tea or your favorite beverage and let's just have some fun talking about pretty, pretty watercolors. Hey everyone, so today's video is kind of a second part to my art supplies I would buy again and again, my ride or die watercolor supplies. The ones that if I lost all my art supplies tomorrow, those are the ones that I would go out and buy first. That video is more general about um, paint and paper and pens and pencils and today I want to talk about uh, specific pigments or colors that I would first buy. There are two things to keep in mind here when I'm choosing these colors. So one is, I don't know which one is more important, I guess they're both equally as important, but the first one is versatility. If I have a limited palette, I need to have colors in the, that palette that allow me to mix as many other shades as possible. So while I love, you know, pinks and turquoises, I know that I need a nice balance. And for the most part, when it comes to watercolors, you want to have, you know, at least one yellow, one pink or red, and one cyan or blue, so somewhere in that area. And while certain choices might give you less, less mixing possibilities, that brings me to the second part of it. Uh, I'm aware that the palette that I'm going to show you won't necessarily allow me to mix every color and I could probably and I could switch certain colors in my palette for others that will give me more versatility. But this is where the that second part comes in, which is personal preference. I, I'll give you an example. Lemon yellow is my example. This is a color that you will find in almost every ready-made set, and with good reason, because it is kind of on the more uh, bluish side of the yellows, so you can mix you know, if you mix it with something like phthalo blue, which is a very uh, yellowish blue, you will get very, very bright greens and very lovely turquoises. However, I don't need that. I never use that color on its own, or hardly ever use it on its own. And with the other colors that I have, I know how to mix greens that I like. And for turquoises, I do like bright turqu turquoises, those are very important to me, but for those I have other colors that work for me. Another example is phthalo blue. It's a great primary, will give you lots of mixing options. I don't like the color, it's too intense for me, it's staining. I would mu much rather have something like uh, ultramarine blue and then if I want kind of a more yellowish blue than something like um, the chromium or, you know, even cobalt or anything like that. Just phthalo blue is just not a color I use and I don't want to have colors just for mixing in my palette. So this is where uh, personal taste comes in and I can give you a lot of examples that it also took me some time to, you know, say, okay, I can have a palette that doesn't have, I don't know, burnt sienna and the world will not implode <laughs> because I just, you know, if I need to tone down my blue or something, I know how to do that with the colors that I have in my palette. So it is, of course, uh, useful to have good color theory knowledge. It's, I would say, dare say crucial, but, um, you know, be brave and I think it just comes with the more you paint and the more you see like, hey, I can make a hundred, you know, art journal pages without lemon yellow, phthalo blue and burnt sienna. So I really don't need those colors in my palette. 
Um, yeah, so we're gonna take a look. I'll try to keep it uh, short and sweet and just talk very shortly about each color that I picked, why I picked it. And I'll also show you a color chart, kind of a basic one. Obviously, with a palette this size, you can do endless, endless amounts of color mixes. And of course, the more you play, the more you mix your own colors, the more you will uh, discover what your palette can do. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, give this video a like. It's all free. It really helps me out. And let's get to it. Okay, let's get started. I know um, some of these won't be a shock to you. I think I have most of the colors here in my set, but I really tried to narrow it down to the essentials. And I'll start with the yellows. So I would definitely have Naples yellow. I love that buttery color. You can kind of also muddy things up with it, and I love it on its own. I particularly love it in a mixture with another color that we will get to. And um, you could uh, go with something like, you know, buff titanium or something like that. But I really, really like this one, and it's a color I can't really mix with the other colors in my palette. Uh, this one is the Schminke. It is my favorite. It's the most uh, buttery and it does have a uh, white pigment in it uh, which probably makes it so lovely and buttery. Uh, when it comes to yellows, I went with Indian yellow. This one is the core one and it's actually three pigments. So, you know, probably not the most ideal choice, but I just really love this color. And the thing is with Core, I have here in my palette uh, a mixture of many brands. And when you mix them with Core, because of the formula of Core Paints, uh, the Core Paints pushes them aside. Now, I really love to sprinkle yellow and splatter it and it really just pushes everything aside. So it doesn't actually muddy up the other colors when you mix them like this, if, like with splatters. I don't know, I have this in my palette. I use it all the time. I don't feel like I'm missing anything, but if it's something that you are really careful about, then I would look for um, something that is single pigment, but I really really love these warm yellows. Those are my uh, favorite ones. And then Quin Gold is... Uh, I really like it when I'm painting kind of more, um, you know, real <laughs> stuff, <laughs> like trying to sketch. Uh, I really like it in mixtures for kind of more natural greens. So yeah, I'm gonna add it, even though I know like Quin Quinacridone Gold is like one of those colors that everyone uh, loves and has. I could probably, I think right now I don't actually have it in this palette and you know, it's okay. <laughs> but I do really like it. So I don't know, maybe we can actually put this to the side and really, really, really narrow this down. Okay, the next one is an absolute must for me, and this would be kind of like an orangey red. So this one is the Pyrrol Red Light. It's just an example. The one that I have in my palette right now, I'm almost out of it. It's actually a Schminke one. It's right here, and it's the Vermilion Light, which Vermilion, uh, I love the shade of Vermilion, but they tend to be very opaque, and I do prefer my paints to be transparent or semi-transparent. So uh, something like this, and also the Ver Schminke Vermilion Light is more transparent. I love these, I use these all the time. I can mix nice oranges with these. I can also mix uh, more muted purples. I can neutralize turquoises. So for me, this is actually the only red that I need in my palette. Unless you wanna call this one a red also. <laughs> this is the Daniel Smith Quinacridone Coral. I love it. It's beautiful. It's just a super pretty, corally, warm, pinkish red. I don't think I can mix it from the other colors in my palette. I use it all the time. Again, 
in mixes to make oranges, to make purples. Love it, need it. For pinks, I have two pinks. One is the Daniel Smith Quinacridone Rose, and then I do love the more purplish pinks. And I have several colors that are almost identical, but my favorite, not by too far, but uh, is the Holbein Bright Rose. Um, there are some kind of dupes from other brands, so really check what you have and, you know, if you like this color, maybe you already have it in your stash by another name, so don't go out and buy something that you might already have. Looking good. Okay, here we're getting brand specific because it took me a long time to find the perfect cobalt violet. This one is the Winsor & Newton one. Uh, from all those I've tried, this one has the the combination of a shade of violet that I love, which is more on the pinkish side and less on the bluish side. Uh, it has beautiful granulation and it also has kind of a base color that shows because I've tried the Daller Rowney one, which is called Cobalt Magenta, and it granulates beautifully, but it's almost like it's just granulation and there's just not enough of actual color you know, between those granulating areas. So that's why I like the Winsor & Newton one. The Daniel Smith one is lovely if you use it fresh from the tube, which I hardly ever do. If you let it dry and then rewet it, it's so anemic and this one rewets beautifully. So this is really a must have uh, for me in any palette. I adore this color and also the mixes that you get between these two are just beautiful. You know, they are light and you get the separation where with the violet granulation these two together even i just like to put them next to each other when i'm sketching and not even mix them it's just you know yellow and um, purple are complementary colors which mean they really bring each other out and i just love these together these are always the colors that i would have to add to any palette uh, because they never come, or hardly ever, sometimes you have Naples yellow in basic palettes, but you never have such a color. Um, the next color I chose is the Daniel Smith Cobalt Blue Violet. I have actually something different now in my palette, but I really love this kind of um, granulating bluish purple, especially for shadows. When I want a shadow, but I don't want to get too dark, I love to use this. For blues, I need ultramarine. Right now, the one I have in my palette is, I think it's the core one. Uh, I don't know, this pan, I just keep refilling it with whatever I find. I don't see big differences. I know some people are attached to one brand or another. I love the, if you want something uh, affordable, White Nights is beautiful, and I've just, started playing with this palette by Van Gogh and I think the ultramarine here is also really nice and it's also very cheap and they have tubes I think the tube of ultramarine I think it was like a 10 milliliter tube maybe bigger it was like two and a half euros so very very affordable and I need to play with it a bit more but I think this could be a great option for some colors they have a very limited range and a lot of um, more of the cheaper pigments. So they, I don't think they have like cobalts and that sort of thing. Uh, but I think for some colors, they would actually be a great option. Okay, so here I admit I couldn't really make up my mind because I tend to go with this. Um, I would go for, you can see, one of these kind of lighter, warmer colors. I, I love these both and I love the way that they granulate and I love the way that you can do sky with them. Uh, I think I have like a something like this or this one in the Daniel Smith Ultimate Mixing Set and I really really enjoy it. It's probably a bit, not probably, but you can see it's a little bit more muted than the manganese blue. So I don't know, maybe I would go with this one but I, I couldn't decide. <laughs> I'm not that attached to either one, but I would want something along these lines in uh, a palette. 
Moving on to the turquoises. I will show you the ones that I cut at the end, okay? So you will see what almost went in. Of course, I need uh, a cobalt teal or in the Schmeke line, it's called cobalt turquoise. The pigment you are searching for is PG50. This is a must for me in any palette. I adore this color um, in small doses. Like, I love it, but if I use too much of it, then usually things go uh, iffy. Uh, I love to neutralize it with this kind of red and it's just beautiful. Every brand I've tried, I have loved. Some are slightly red, like greener, some are slightly bluer, some have slight more granulation, but they're all gorgeous. They all granulate and they are also uh, semi-opaque or opaque. So you kind of have to be uh, light-handed with them. And Cobalt Teal's muted cousin <laughs> is depending on the brand um it's it's kind of this color this is the daniel smith sleeping beauty turquoise genuine which is ridiculously expensive well not ridiculously i know it's made from actual like stones so i can i'm guessing that the price is justified um i know on camera it doesn't look like there's much of a difference i'll show you a dupe that i found for this from the schminke line schminke calls this color cobalt green turquoise it's here and this is the schminke cobalt turquoise or cobalt teal uh, in other brands and this one is the green turquoise and I use them both a lot. This one is, you know, you can see it's darker, deeper, more, a little bit more greenish. And I use them a lot together. This would be almost like a, uh, you could use it as a shadow. Because I don't, I, I just have one green in this palette. Um, I really enjoy mixing greens with the turquoises and my yellows. So I think I would include the two of them. Uh, my one green that I would like to have is this kind of green gold. It's named in some um, brands. This one is the Schminke Green Yellow, I think they call it. Um, you can see something. That's how it looks in the pan. This kind of earthy golden green. I love this color on its own and then I can deepen it with any of the blues and um, I can muddy it up with the pinks. I just love it. And it kind of, it, it is a convenience color. I think I could easily mix it with the other ones, but I do like to have it on hand. Now every palette needs some darks. Um, you know, value is really important if you want to make attractive looking uh, artwork. And I decided to go with these two. Uh, the Schmincke Neutral Tint, I love it. So something like this, just darker, that will allow you to have more um, darker values in your work. And something like a bluish gray. I love also Payne's Gray in certain brands. You have bluish Payne's Gray now. This one is the uh, Daniel Smith Soda Light Genuine. It also granulates beautifully. This is the type of shade I would want. I'm not super attached necessarily to this one. And this is my palette, my must-haves. And I look at it and I love each and every color and I wouldn't want to have a palette without any of these. Now I'll show you the ones that almost made the cut. So I talked about Queen Gold. Daniel Smith Moon Glow is beautiful. Um, yeah, it is a beautiful color. There's nothing to say. I would love to have it also in a palette. Schminke Helio Turquoise is the only turquoise I think that I know that is a single pigment. It is gorgeous. I have it here in my palette. You can see it's well loved. It is very intense and I find that I really don't use super, super intense colors as much as I did before. So while I love it and I do use it, I think I could live without it. Then we have some of these, you can see, um, these three, they are more on the pastel side. We have here the Daniel Smith uh, Lavender and Wisteria. I really love them both. I love 
just they look beautiful now the wisteria i think it i get a similar effect when i use the cobalt violet but i love these two i don't use them a lot in mixes i use them kind of as they are because they do have white and things tend to get muddy fast um and they are kind of hard to mix from the colors that i have in my palette so I don't know, I just really like them, but I'm aware that they are not as versatile as any of the other ones. And this one is such a special color. This is the Sennelier Emerald Green. It is, the pigment is PG36. This is transparent, even though it looks like it wouldn't be. Also in the, in the pan, that's how it is here. This color is just so unique. Now, Daniel Smith has a similar color, the Fuchsite, I think it's called. But I think the fuchsite has like a little bit of shimmer in it or something. Um, I really love this color. And yeah, again, it's not the most versatile one, but it's just beautiful. So these one were kind of like, yeah, I want them. But I, I'm, I know there aren't, they aren't as useful. And last but not least is a color I really, really enjoy. This is the Daniel Smith Nickel Azo Yellow. And it's just such a beautiful earthy yellow that I really love. So yeah, this was a, a runner-up, like a good one. <laughs> but I think the Indian yellow has that just a bit more liveliness that I do want sometimes. And I think if you just, you know, use just a bit of dirty brush, you could muddy it up and get something similar to this. But this is a beautiful color. And I think if you enjoy um, painting nature, landscapes, that sort of thing, uh, this is a beautiful beautiful option so let's take a look at the color chart okay i zoomed you in as much as i could um obviously this is kind of a big a big color chart that i tried to fit into a very small page because honestly i can't be bothered i think these can be very helpful but I just I just paint with my paints. I paint, I mix, and I see what happens. And the more you do this, the more you will get to know your supplies. So I'm not, um, you know, saying you shouldn't do this. Obviously better than me. I couldn't be bothered with like mixing every color in the palette and then putting it here. So this would be more of a glazing kind of chart so yeah it's it's very limited in <laughs> the information <laughs> that it shows but um i kind of already know what's going to happen because i've been using these colors for years and i just want to show you like what i was talking about the naples yellow and the cobalt violet um this to me is magic the granulation and yeah, I just love these colors together. So you can see that you get really, really beautiful oranges with my color palette because I do like uh, those warm yellows and reds. And there's a nice uh, selection of granulating colors, uh, the ultramarine blue and the cobalts uh, really granulate beautifully. And yeah you can get a lot of nice neutrals here you can see with the uh, with the darker colors you can tone down or darken the other ones i also like uh, many times i mix the gold green with kind of pinks to get um, those very earthy oranges i do like those also the turquoises and the pinks make some very, very kind of muted purples, which I also like many times. Uh, I like them also as shadows. I use a lot of purple as shadows. And yeah, this just, I'm, I'm looking at this and it makes me so happy because I absolutely adore every single color on this palette. Now you can see here the, I think the this was the blue from the Daniel Smith Ultimate Mixing Set. It's here. So this is the, I think it's the Cerulean Chromium. I'll write all the info so you can see. I'll put the full list of these 
uh, below. And you can definitely see it's such a nice color. It has this beautiful granulation and you can really create more, um, you know, a little more muted, realistic skies as opposed to the ultramarine, which you, probably I, I wouldn't use it on its own as a sky color, but this could work. And both of them are just always so beautiful when you tone them down or neutralize them a little bit with whatever color you want. You just, that granulation really um, appeals to me personally. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in another one very soon.